I have achieved the Platinum Trophy in Elden Ring and have become the new Elden Lord. I caused chaos in the lands, and now I plan to spread my chaos even further by platinuming Dark Souls, one of From Software's oldest games. In order to achieve this, I need to defeat every boss in the game, acquire all the spells, miracles, and pyromancies, complete various quests, and play through the game 2.5 times. There is a total of 41 achievements that I need to unlock to become the true embodiment of chaos. Let's get started. The game's starts with me customizing my character, known across the land as Sir Godric. These next clips are from a new game plus as I didn't have the footage from my first playthrough. I wake up in the Undead Asylum, a very happy place, but I make my way through the tutorial area eventually getting outside the boss arena to the first bonfire, which serves as a checkpoint in each Dark Souls game, where you can level up and repair equipment. Lighting this bonfire earns me the Enkindle achievement. In the Asylum, a big bodyguard arrives and his chunkiness makes his attacks easy to read and avoid, and my character defeats him easily. I also received the Estus Flask, a healing drink in the game. This makes me laugh as my father's healing drink is alcohol. Receiving the Estus Flask also earns me another achievement. Exiting the asylum, I reach Lordran, the mainland of the game. I like this place a lot as it connects every other region at this one spot. Furthermore, reaching the not so Firelink Shrine rewards me a trophy for finding the hub area. Inside the graveyard, however, I would find my favorite weapon in the entire game, the Zoolander Sword. But as for now, the damage is something left to be desired. So I persevere onward into the town where I was greeted by a dragon. Dark Souls must have really liked Lord of the Rings. Anyway, I then walk into my next boss fight, the Torontus Demon, and this fight now would become a regular occurrence later on. After some back and forth failing to be cool, I defeat the Torontus Demon without losing my sanity. As I wandered around the open world, I encountered a man who invited me to join his exclusive Whiteman Covenant. Intrigued by this, I joined and got an achievement for it. Soon after, I faced the first major boss of the game, the Gargoyles. With my newly acquired sword skills, I was able to defeat them on my second attempt without any casualties at all. This victory allowed me to access the church bell, which rung would earn me a trophy. However, to reach the second bell, I had to traverse through the notoriously difficult Blight Town. Once there, I fought a Spider Queen boss, who was difficult as each time I got confident in my skills, this game shattered it like my broken will to live. After defeating the queen, I got access to the second bell. Ringing it woke up a giant, who in turn opened the gates to Sen's fortress. Before heading there, however, I sought out the Spider Queen's daughter and joined her covenant of chaos. This decision proved useful as I would receive good perks later on, as well as a trophy just for joining her covenant of chaos. After some contemplation, I decided against heading to Sen's fortress, and opted instead to venture into the catacomb. Unfortunately, my discovery of Pinwheel was very disappointing, but I did get the right to Kindle once she was defeated. This granted me to improve bonfires, which means I get more Estus Flask at the cost of some humanity. It was well worth it though, as I did receive a trophy for my efforts. Finally, I mustered the courage to brave Sen's fortress, where I had both amusing and frustrating experiences. Despite facing setbacks and enduring some humorous deaths, I ultimately made it out alive. Before taking on the next boss, I equipped myself with Onion Boy's armor, which I had been using for some part of this playthrough. With the help of his armor, I was able to fight and defeat the Iron Golem, and it wasn't that hard as I already gained enough experience killing his kind. Eventually, I was able to rip out the very core of this golem, and he went down. I then called for an air taxi to take me to Anus, London. Once I arrived, I was awarded an achievement for visiting this hidden city. While exploring the city, I began to gather all the resources I could find. As I was searching, I came across Havel's armor set. Although I don't think I'll use this in the future, I decided to take it. However, my luck quickly turned as I was attacked by a kung fu chest and ultimately defeated. The bosses here at Anus London's were notorious for being the toughest boss in the entire game. Their name still haunts Dark Souls veterans to this day. They are Orange and S'mores. Now my first attempt wasn't that great and I got crushed by smalls. However, on my second attempt, I leveled up my stamina to be able to wear the full Onion Boy armor set, and this made a huge difference. Enough that I could kill the orange and steal his soul. Past the boss arena, I opened the doors to see my reward. Th that being the Lord Vessel, of course. Obtaining the Lord Vessel gets me an achievement and the ability to walk between bonfires, which was a welcome addition. Talking to the princess, she invites me to her covenant. This also gets me an achievement, but I refuse, as I'm already in my Chaos Covenant. I walk back to Filing Shrine and talk to the snake guy, who swallows me whole and takes me down to hell. 
When I am released, I put the soup bowl on the tree stump to make some onion soup. With the Lord Vessel Place, I now need to seek out the souls of the four lords. They are Seath the Scaleless, the Four Kings, the Bed of Chaos, and Grave Lord Nido. These fights are annoying at best, as each lord has a certain twist that throws out everything you learn from the first half of the game, sets you on fire, and dunks you in a pool of acid, which is the closest description of how these fights feel. But the first on my bucket list is Seath the Scaleless. His fight is the easiest out of the four lords, as his attacks are easy to read and avoid. It's like he's blind or something. So without much trouble, he goes down, and defeating Seath gives me a trophy. Before continuing with the Lord Slaughter, I went after some bosses. The first was Dark Sun Gwendolyn, who I absolutely had no trouble fighting and totally didn't almost die. But after her inevitable demise, I get an achievement. Sif was up next and he is a dog that holds a sword. His fight also went well and watching his limpy body struggle to keep up, I put the good boy down, getting the ability to traverse the abyss, which will help in the next Lord fight. I then went into the painted world, and this place sucks. It isn't because I suck at the game, it's other reasons. But the boss was cool. Priscilla had an interesting fight as she went invisible, which means I had a predator amongst me. But cutting off her tail leads to her being killed and getting me a trophy. I then jump off her balcony into the abyss, which brings me back to reality. I then went after the four kings, and the ring I got from Sif allowed me to actually fight the boss. Now the four kings were essentially a DPS race, and without my chaos blade, I sadly couldn't outkill the king, resulting in all four spawning in before I could kill the first one. But with my Haviled armor set, I was able to tank a lot of the damage, and ultimately came out on top. Defeating the Four Kings gets me the Four Kings trophy. I then went after the Bed of Chaos, and this fight was a pain in the ass. I did beat it on my second try due to some complications on the first attempt, but this fight was essentially a patience game, and I don't have a lot of patience. So my brute force strategy actually paid off, and I was able to defeat the boss getting the Chaos Bed achievement. With the three lords defeated, I give their soul to the Lord Vessel. Now only one stands in my way. The god of death himself, Grave Lord Nido, otherwise known as Death. Nido is the hardest boss out of the four lords, mainly because he recruits the dead to aid him in the fight. And when you kill them, they just repair themselves as if nothing happened and bounce back, keeping me from attacking. Not to mention that bleed buildup is insane. But after continually getting my ass thrusted by his big sword and hearing his deafening screams, my pure godlike gamer skills kicked in and his defeat is inevitable. I claim his soul. So does that mean me death or did I just kill it? Anyway, overpopulation is going to be a bit. Beneath the filing shrine, I sacrifice Nido's soul to the Lord Vessel, and a very cool cutscene plays where I unlock the final zone. But before getting the first out of the two endings, I would need to farm the Black Knights inside, and they drop the Red Titanite Chunks, which I could then use to upgrade my Chaos Sewer Hander to plus 5 Chaos Reinforcement, which in turn gives me the Chaos Weapon Achievement. There are many more achievements just like this that I'll need to get, but for now, this will do. With my fully upgraded Chaos Blade, I am now ready for the final boss. Gwyn is the last boss of this game, and at first I wanted to fight him normally. However, I did decide to do the parry strategy, and at first I thought the damage wasn't great, but then it surprised me and I knew it was all over for him. Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder, was easy. By warming up my parries against the Black Knights, I could easily repose Gwyn, but at the last hit, I decided to spare his dignity and use my overhead slash to finish him off. With Gwyn down, I could choose one of the two endings. So for my first playthrough, I decided to carry out his legacy and sacrifice myself to the Sacred Fire. This Nobel Peace Prize performance will award me the Link to Fire ending and achievement. Now all I had to do was play through the game 1.5 times more, but I'll spare you the uneventful details. The differences between the second playthrough compared to the first playthrough didn't happen until the fight against Orange and S'mores, where this time I had to defeat S'mores instead of Orange. This gives me small soul instead of orange's soul, which I need for an achievement later on. After S'mores was defeated, I went covenant hunting to pick up any I missed. The first covenant was the forest hunter covenant, where I talked to this crazy cat lady and she let me join the cool kids club. The second covenant had me fight the four kings without placing down the lord vessel. 
After the fight, Snake Man appeared and let me join the Emo Club. The Third Covenant had me run a marathon whilst being chased by a Hydra. Find a dragon and join the Dragon Cub Covenant. I couldn't think of any funny name to call this covenant. The Fourth Covenant had me sleep in a coffin and get transported to Nido, where I worship death and joined the Suicidal Club. The Fourth Covenant had me kneel to worship the Dark Sun, meaning I joined the Astrophysicist Club. And finally, the Last Covenant had me praise the sun, making me a warrior of sunlight. Sad, I didn't get any light. Saber. All these covenants got me 6 achievements, giving me a total of 26 out of 41 trophies. 9 achievements I got are for reinforcing a weapon into every possible reinforcement. Those 9 reinforcement types are crystal reinforcement, standard reinforcement, raw reinforcement, occult reinforcement, magic reinforcement, fire reinforcement, lightning reinforcement, divine reinforcement, and enchanted reinforcement. Doing this reinforced my chance of getting these trophies. I then had to track down every pyromancy, every stupid miracle, and every sorcery in the entire game, even though I'm never gonna use them. But this gives me a total of three trophies. I then kill Gwyn, Lord of Cinder again, but instead of cementing his legacy, I leave the boss room and become the true Dark Lord of Chaos, awarding me the second ending's achievement. After that, I play to the game once more, collecting the remaining souls I needed to craft every boss weapon, using each of their souls. This awards me the Knight's Honor Trophy, as well as the Platinum Trophy for Dark Souls 1. Now that I've Platinum Dark Souls, an overwhelming sense of accomplishment has made me fall in love with this series more than I ever thought was possible. So for my next From Software game, I'm gonna platinum Dark Souls 2 at 500 subs. Until then, I hope you love this video and make sure you leave a like and if you want to see me platinum Dark Souls 2, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to see more of my platinum videos, make sure to watch my Sonic Superstars Platinum that I'll leave on screen now.